Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. I've always been fascinated by the idea of creating something indestructible. It was a preoccupation in my childhood, and this idea was one of the major forces that drew me into studying material science. Why are buildings made out of concrete and steel and not linguine and marshmallow? With all the technology in the world and everything humans know about alloys, polymers, composites, and nanomaterials, is it possible to create impenetrable armor? What about a sword that can slice right through other swords? Something like the adamantine metal of Wolverine's claw or the Valerian steel from Game of Thrones. It turns out there was something like this in actual history, something called Damascus steel. Around 500 AD, sword makers in the Middle East figured out a method to produce weapons with near supernatural strength and cutting ability, unrivaled by anything from any other civilization at the time. The overwhelming superiority of these swords and knives is due to the very special alloy used to forge them. The steel was harder, more durable, and could hold an edge longer than any other metal available. The legend is that one of these blades could cleanly slice through a falling silk scarf. This was featured in the 90s movie The Bodyguard. Kevin Costner woos Whitney Houston by demonstrating the sharpness of his antique sword. Back in the 6th century, Europeans who saw this feat were just astounded. Their weapons weren't capable of anything like this. Also, the blades of these special weapons had a striking, characteristic wavy pattern on the surface. Some have described them like sands moving across the desert, or like waves on the surface of water. This pattern isn't just decoration. It's part of what gives the metal its resilient sharpness, strength, and durability. It leads to a composite effect where the light and dark regions of the steel work together to keep cracks and fractures from spreading. There is still some debate about the origin of this ancient technology. But since the steel was supposed to be first created in the oldest capital city in the world, Damascus, the steel became known as Damascus steel. This story reminds me of ayahuasca and the pyramids. Ancient, high technology built from knowledge that shouldn't have been at the command of the people at the time, if we understand history the right way. Material science, in a way, is like alchemy. Searching for a process or ritual to turn common things into something extraordinary, something emergent, something more than the sum of its parts. How does someone find the right rocks, grind them the right way, mix them in the right proportions, fire them at just the right temperature for the perfect amount of time? How would someone even begin to figure that out so many centuries ago? Steel itself is the stuff of alchemical magic. Take iron and a pinch of charcoal and end up with the most remarkable and important material the world has ever seen. Ancient nanotechnology. Long before chemists developed the periodic table or even had any idea of atoms, alchemists were approaching science through ritual and achieving some success. Alchemists and blacksmiths back then didn't understand why what they were doing worked. They just knew it did. There were no metallurgy textbooks. The recipes for making steel and forging swords were taught and passed down as tradition or secret knowledge. This is at the heart of the story of Damascus steel, an alloy with almost magical properties, with an unmistakable pattern in the microstructure. For centuries, until recent decades, the technology had actually been lost. For a while, no one on earth knew how to make the material. Before the code was cracked, scientists and blacksmiths were banging their heads into the wall for generations, trying to figure out how to make Damascus steel. But the secret of the steel just seemed uncrackable. Adding to the confusion was the fact that it was possible to replicate a similar sort of ripple pattern in the steel surface using different methods like lamination or pattern welding. Using these techniques, different types of steel are folded and layered to create the finished product. However, this is not exactly legit. This is not true Damascus steel. It might look the part, but it doesn't cut like the real stuff. The wavy pattern 
In real Damascus steel is a natural feature of the steel alloy microstructure, appearing on its own as soon as the metal is cooled from red hot. The dark lines on the metal surface correspond to phase separated high carbon regions. The pattern in bona fide Damascus steel comes down to the chemistry and doesn't require folding and hammering together different light and dark alloys. Many people throughout the world tried to recreate the material without any success. There was always strong demand for Damascus steel, but in the 19th century, something strange happened. After 11 centuries, it just stopped being made. The means of its manufacture was entirely lost, and the reason why was a mystery until just a few years ago. As it turns out, the Damascus steel technique was not actually lost. It just stopped working. The secret that had produced such high quality weapons was not in the technique of the swordsmiths, but rather in the composition of the steel alloy. For centuries, the swordsmiths had gotten their steel ingots imported from one region in India. In the 19th century, the mining region where those ingots came from changed. These new ingots contained different impurities from the originals. Because of the new composition, the new ingots could not be successfully forged into Damascus steel. The swordsmiths didn't understand the nature, the chemistry of the material they were working with. So when the material changed, Damascus steel was just lost. Before this, the secret of the steel was shared by armorers across the ancient world, notably in Persia, where some of the finest specimens were produced. According to Dr. Helmut Nickel, curator of the Arms and Armor Division of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, legend had it that the best blades were quenched in dragon blood. European warriors learned about Damascus steel through contact with Middle Eastern fighters during the Crusades in the 11th century and were impressed by their sharpness, elasticity, and hardness, as well as the beautiful patterned look of the blades, which could not be damaged even by the worst wear and tear. In his 1825 Crusades novel, The Talisman, Sir Walter Scott describes an encounter between Saladin and King Richard, in which the Sultan impresses the English king by showing off the sharp edge of his scimitar, which was marked with tens of millions of meandering lines. For eight centuries, the Arab sword makers succeeded in concealing their techniques from competitors. Ancient texts found in Asia Minor state that to temper a Damascus sword, the blade must be heated until it glows like the sun rising in the desert. It then should be cooled to the color of royal purple and plunged into the body of a muscular warrior so that his strength could be transferred to the sword. The real secret of Damascus weapons isn't human sacrifice, but rather in the chemistry of the raw material, a special alloy from India known as woods or ceric steel. I mentioned before that steel is just iron with a little bit of carbon. That's true, but there's a lot more to it. Wood steel is iron with carbon, but there's some additional magic in the mix. Trace elements like vanadium and molybdenum, and perhaps very tiny amounts of things like carbon nanotubes, shape the steel microstructure and give rise to the striking cementite surface bands and insane mechanical properties of Damascus steel. Modern metallurgists are still trying to fully nail down the recipe, and there is still some argument about whether science really understands how this material works. Further research seems to be just intensifying the mystery. Material scientist John Verhoeven recently published an article on his attempts to reproduce the elemental, structural, and visual characteristics of Damascus steel with interesting results. A team of researchers based at the Technical University of Dresden used X-ray diffraction and electron microscopy to characterize ancient Damascus steel samples, and they discovered, to their surprise, the presence of advanced materials like cementite nanowires and carbon nanotubes. Maybe there is even more to the story of Damascus steel, a technology with mysterious origins that for a while slipped right through civilization's fingers and became out of reach. It's frightening to think of vital knowledge suffering the same fate. It's not easy to discover things, and if they're lost, there's no guarantee they'll ever be rediscovered. Thank you very much. This was Chris Rankin with Vanadium.